Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some grimdark weathering techniques on the Land Raider Proteus. We're going to be taking a look at some techniques right up from prep all the way up to the finished results. Also, stay tuned to the end of this video so you can find out how you can win this tank that I've painted in this video. Also, all paints that are used in this video will be listed in the description in the links below. I won't be going over the metallics such as like the tanks and stuff like that. The paints will be, as, as I say, listed. However, I just literally dry brushed all the metallic areas on. So first things first, when we're prepping our miniature um, and we're going to add some you know, like weathering and battle damage is I like to get a scalpel like this and start hacking away at my miniature and just going into corners as though it's been dink scratched and all that good stuff. Also, you can use files and things like that to uh, weather them up even more. Get something like a little drill, start drilling little holes in uh, to make some bullet holes. One thing I will say about bullet holes is don't just drill them and then leave them. Get your scalpel out again and just little sections, just go in and rotate your blade in certain sections just to make it look like as it's pinged and hit that, you know, that armor, it's actually like left little dints because you're never going to get like a perfect circle with like bullet holes, especially on like armor and stuff on tanks. It's a good idea just to go in and chip away some of those areas. Next up, we're gonna get some crackle paint. Uh, the one is the that you saw is the one that I use, and you can mess about with this a little bit, like water some down, put it thicker in areas. And I always, with all my weathering, when it comes to like the bottom areas of the tank, I always tend to apply it a little bit heavier. And as we work up our way towards the top, I get a little bit lighter with it. But any sort of crackle paint will do. It doesn't have to be these this specific brand. Um, Games Workshop do one with the Martian one where it's got like crackle paint and a bit of sand. That one's fantastic as well to use uh, along this side. But any sort of crackle paint uh, will do for this. What I do then is you can use either Typhus Corrosion or I've got um, AK Concrete, which essentially it's just got a little bit of finer grit in it. It's a lot of like texture paints to sort of have like uh, sand in them or grit. Uh, this one and like the Typhus Corrosion just tends to have one that's a little bit finer and it's a little bit better for this scale that we're working. And again, I'm just going around and applying this in certain areas. Um, if you want for like your tracks and stuff, I apply a little bit of water so it's not too thick, but it's just going to leave that like grit behind or like the little water bits that dry after it don't really affect the final finish. It's the grit that we're after in this product. And as you can see now, as we're rotating, this is what you should be looking like before we move into our primer phase. So when it comes to priming our miniature at this point, um, I'm actually, because we're going to be using chipping fluid, we want to create like a, a rusty base coat. And the beauty of that is you don't have to prime it and then paint it rusty. There are paints out there that you can use to make it rusty instantly as a primer. So you're killing two birds with one stone. So we're using German Red Brown first, literally applying this as, as one base coat all the way around the miniature, even on the tracks and stuff. But we don't just want to leave it at, at that, you know, it's like when we're chipping it down, it just creates that red. I want to get a bit of variation in it. So I had a couple of drops of black um, as like my second coat of primer. And I just literally go around uh, and just spray it in randomly in different areas. Now, this time I'm using Vallejo chipping fluid. I, I normally use the AK one and I probably would recommend that. I just got this and I just wanted to try it out. It does, it don't really go through airbrush that well. It's quite thick and spattery. So I definitely would recommend the AK version, but you want to leave that about 15, 20 minutes to dry. Don't use a hair dryer. You can use the, uh, if you're using an airbrush, just use the air from your nozzle because heat will make it set. Now for this, I've got my Sons of Horus green and I'm going to do two thin coats of this once that's dry and you'll, sort, you'll know when it's dry, so it leaves like this patchy, glossy stuff and you're just working your way around now spraying it on top of that and you can do it by hand if you want to and just building it up in two thin coats all the way around the miniature making sure all your areas uh, are covered and the beauty of this is as well if you want to get down to the bottom and leave a little bit off the bottom uh, it's also going to add to that weathering and chipping a little bit later on as it's sort of faded towards the bottom and as one final highlight i've got some sebrite green and i'm just spraying this in certain areas just to act as a highlight 
Um, but what you want to do as well is give this about 15 minutes to dry, but do not use a heat or a heat gun to uh, make that dry because it's just going to make that chipping fluid set and it's going to be a lot harder to uh, work. So if you've never used chipping fluid, essentially what we can do at this stage is all you need is water and a brush or some like paper clips and scalpels and stuff. And you're just going to literally apply some water on top of it and just brush away very gentle because depending, I found with this one, the uh, Vallejo one, it did require a bit more work. Um, but you're just going to go around and you'll notice it'll start to flake off and chip like it does in real life. Now, there are lots of different tools and stuff that you can use to be able to do it. Uh, but I obviously use like paper clips or like a stiff brush to add extra like scratches uh, along those lines. Paying special attention to the bottom area where your miniature is going to get dinged up if it were real life. Now I've added a matte varnish once all that's dried up and then we're going to go into our trusty old uh, MIG brown wash. Um, again, I know I mentioned this in every video so a lot of people ask me where to get it from. I think it is discontinued but AK dark brown wash is literally the exact same. But um, the reason I'm using this through an airbrush and again safety first <laughs> is uh, got the ventilation. It can be quite dangerous through an airbrush. Uh, but you can apply it by hand as well but i'm just covering it for speed and it's just a little bit faster and then once that's dry get our mineral spirits and or a cloth like you saw me use a second ago and just start to wipe away once all that's dry we're going to go into our it's like acting like a, a, a filter so basically i've got these two oil paints and i'm just dotting and dabbing those two different oil paints all over our miniature and then with a clean, dry brush, uh, with a tiny, tiny little bit of mineral spirits, so you're gonna do some dry brushing to get that excess mineral spirits off there, rub it off on a towel, is just with an up and down motion, it's, you're sort of gonna start buffing those streaks in. Now, like I said, this is just very subtle, and it just acts as though, if we're looking at it a bit later on, as though like parts of the paint have become uh, like streaky or like the the weathering all around it has started to affect that paint and change the pigment of the color if it were like a, a real life tank and feel free depending on what you know sort of color scheme you're going you can experiment with different oil paints to get different looks now our first stage of weathering we've gone to our dirty downs rust um, but what you'll see here is um, I've, I actually use a lot of water in it I literally get it down to like a, a wash consistency and I go into all the tracks and all different areas uh, and wash it into the areas that I need. And then we're gonna get an applicator, like our little sponges. And um, what I'm doing is, with this, it, it, I dip it in and I sort of start to let it dry because I want it to, to build up and get like chunks on it. And especially around the bottom areas or the areas that you really wanna get rusty, is I just work my way around and dab it on. Now, like I did say uh, in an old video, I've got these new Ammo by MIG streaking brushes. Uh, they are really good. I do recommend them, uh, especially you know if you don't want to go out and buy uh, like big pots of enamel. Uh, these are great for like testers. They're only a few pound, and I've got like a rust one, a brown one, and like a grimy one. I'm probably going to pick up a couple of different other ones. And again, it's a bit like our like our dot filtering that we did earlier with the oils. I'm just going to go around and dot and streak little areas. Now, these this is not going to be the final results because I understand at this stage uh, the, the streaks look uh, quite bad. But again, like we did with the oils, we're just going to dip it in a little bit of mineral spirits and start to work them uh, back down and streak them. Um, try and get them as thin as you can. In some areas like where I've got more battle damage, I will leave it a little bit thicker. And then if you've got some in corners, feel free to stipple it on. All I'm doing here is just edge highlighting under some of those chips. I think that's a crucial part of adding chips. You just add a little bit of a lighter underneath though, just to make them stand out and make them look a little bit more 3D. Now this is a product that I absolutely love and I've not really used it much in my videos. This is AK Dust Effects. So this gives the illusion of if like tanks and stuff have been through one of the fields, it's got a bit of dust built up over time. And I do heavily, heavily thin this because it is quite strong and powerful. Um, and when it's dry, as you can see, it sort of starts to look like dust. But to make it look even more dustier, I get some uh, pigment powders. Uh, this is just a rust one. And I'm just going in and dusting this all over onto the miniature to add a little bit more. Now we're going to go into some mud. So it's been through mud. 
Um, you can use like the, the dry ones like I've just done. I might dry brush a little bit of that on. Uh, but AK also do one called a wet mud, which is really good. It's basically just glossy, glossy mud. And I've got this on my brush. You can flick it on me like a cocktail stick, or if you like me and a bit lazy, I like to flick it through an airbrush. And that is it, as you can see now. And now everything's set and dry. You've got a lovely surface variation. You know, you've got that wet mode. You've got the dry dust effects. You've got the even dustier uh, rust from our like pigment powders as well as the dirty downs rust. So what we're trying to achieve here when we're doing these is just create so much different variation in the weathering and the streaks. And I know it might seem like a lot of work, but everything comes together to create this unique look of weathering. Now I did say you could win this miniature and all you have to do to be in a chance to win this and we'll announce it in um, next month just before Christmas is be a subscriber to this channel. Follow me on one of my social media network sites, which is only Instagram. Uh, so sorry for some of you Facebook guys. Um, and share uh, and tag this video as well. And leave a comment when you have done that. It's been a chance to enter uh, into the competition to win this. And I'll ship it to anywhere in the world, apart from like North Pole and places where you can't really get. Um, so again, thanks for watching this video. If you're not already, please remember to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you in my next video.